Hello chemistry geeks. Today's lesson is on the shapes of molecules. So far we've learned about Lewis electron dot diagrams and we understand the difference between ionic bonding and covalent bonding. So today we're going to look at covalently bonded molecules and try to understand their geometric shapes. So there's two factors that I want you to consider when we talk about the shape of a molecule. The first is how many atoms are attached to the central atom. Today I'm going to use a small ball of clay to represent our central atom. So we're going to be looking out for how many things do I attach to it. The second factor that affects the shape of the molecule is whether or not there are lone pairs on the central atom. If you recall, a lone pair is a set of electrons that are not involved in bonding. So let's go ahead and begin. If I start off with my atom that's in the middle, my central atom, and I start to attach other atoms. So far, you can tell I've got one atom that's attached. I'm going to use simply a dowel rod to represent another atom here. Now when you have just one atom attached, we don't worry about the shape very much because the only thing you can do between two points is create a straight line. So it starts getting complicated when we add more atoms than that. Let's add a second atom to our central atom. But where do we put it? Can we just stick the atom wherever we want? Can we create a shape like this? Can we put the second atom here? There's actually a very specific place that that second atom needs to be placed. You see, this represents a covalent bond. There are electrons being shared within that region. If there are electrons here, and there are electrons here, we realize that those electron clouds are going to repel each other. So how do we create a configuration that's going to minimize the repulsion between those pairs of electrons? Well, we try to get the electron pairs as far away from each other as we possibly can. How do you do that? If we push this bond angle to 180 degrees, we can get the electrons in this bond and the electrons in this bond as far away from each other as they possibly can be. If you look at the shape that we've created, doesn't it look just like a straight line? We call this a linear molecule. Would there ever be any reason why these bonds would be closer together than 180 degrees? There's one other factor that we talked about, and that is a lone pair. In some configurations, you have a central atom that not only has an atom over on the right and on the left-hand side, but also a lone pair that resides on the central atom. Remember, a lone pair is a set of electrons not involved in bonding. I'm going to use a balloon to represent a lone pair. Now, you'll notice that the electrons in this lone pair take up quite a bit of space. The reason why a lone pair takes up so much space is because we don't have an atom on the other side to localize that electron cloud between two nuclei. In the case of a regular bond, the electron cloud is held in between the two nuclei. In this case, we've got an electron cloud that really is taking up quite a bit of room. And because of that, it causes a huge amount of repulsion. So I want you to think about this. If you have electrons over on the left-hand side and electrons over on the right-hand side, but also an electron cloud that creates a huge amount of repulsion, what do you think is going to happen to those two covalent bonds? If this lone pair is creating repulsion, then these shared pairs of electrons naturally begin to push downward. And so what we find out is happening is those shared pairs get pushed down and actually create a molecule that looks like it's been bent or cracked. So the shape that we've created is actually called bent. This shape is also seen if you have two atoms attached and if there are two lone pairs even more repulsion will be created. Those two lone pairs are going to stay on the top of the molecule and push the shared pairs down even closer together. So rather than having a bond angle that's 180 degrees like we did with the linear shape, the shape that we've now created has those atoms pushed closer together 
and has a bond angle closer to about 105 degrees. So now let's go back to our original central atom and talk about what would happen to that linear shape if we added a third atom. If we add a third atom, do we create something that looks like a right angle? Are we getting these shared pairs of electrons, these bonds, as far away from each other as they possibly can be? Because you remember, electrons repel each other. We need to push these attached atoms into positions that are as far from each other as they can be to minimize repulsion. So we can actually push these shared pairs down a little bit. And what happens is we create a bond angle that's equal on all different sides here. And that bond angle, you would imagine, would be 120 degrees. That would allow us to get these bonds as far away from each other as they possibly could be. You'll notice that this is a flat molecule. You'll notice that there are three things that are attached. And this is why we come up with the name trigonal planar for this molecule. Trigonal comes from the fact that we have three atoms attached. And planar comes from the fact that this is a flat molecule. It's two-dimensional. It actually doesn't move into a third dimension. So trigonal planar is when we have three things attached. But you'll notice there's no lone pair. But what if there was a lone pair? What if there was a lone pair on the central atom that took up a huge amount of space and created a huge amount of repulsion. The repulsion coming from this lone pair would actually push these bonds farther away. So to minimize repulsion, we're going to take these bonds and we're going to push them down a little bit. I'm going to put that lone pair down for a second so we can create this shape together. And what ends up happening is our molecule is now three-dimensional. We still have three things attached, but do you notice it looks a lot more like a pyramid down on the bottom? Remember that lone pair is creating a lot of repulsion up on the top, which pushes those bonds downward closer to each other. And ultimately what ends up happening is we have a shape that looks like a pyramid, we know that that repulsion is coming from the top, and it's called trigonal pyramidal. The name comes from three things attached, trigonal, and pyramidal is because of a three-dimensional pyramidal shape. We've got one more molecule that we need to talk about. What happens if we have a central atom and we have four things attached? Would we get 90-degree angles from our various bonds. You have to ask yourself, are we getting these bonds as far away from each other as they possibly could be? I think we're only using two dimensions here. Could we push these bonds farther away from each other and give ourselves an angle that's a little bit greater than 90 degrees? So what if we push this into three dimensions and create something that looks like a camera tripod. In this case, you have one of these bonds that's shooting toward you, one that's kind of out to the side, and one's actually coming more backward toward me. And we've got one that's going straight up and down. The bond angle now is 109.5 degrees. We're taking up three dimensions. We're definitely minimizing repulsion. And the name for this shape is called a tetrahedral. In the tetrahedral molecule, we've got four atoms that are attached to the central atom. And there are no lone pairs on the central atom. So the molecules that we've talked about, you want to remember there are two factors that affect the shape of a molecule. The first is how many atoms are directly bonded to that central atom. And you want to think about are there lone pairs on the central atom. We're not looking at lone pairs on those outside atoms. 
only the central atom. If you can remember those two simple factors, you can determine the geometrical shape of a molecule. To look at molecules in a different way, let's use FET simulations from the University of Colorado. In the center, I've got a purple atom that's attached to two white atoms. Watch as I change the different types of bonds. In the beginning, I had two single bonds. Now I've got a single bond on the right and a double bond on the left. Let's see what happens if we have two double bonds. In each of these cases, you'll notice that we create a linear molecule. It doesn't matter if we have double bonds or triple bonds or single bonds. The idea is the purple atom in the middle is attached to two different things, which gave us that linear shape. Now we've added a lone pair. And as we said before, that bends those two bonds down and gives us what we call a bent shape. We can make that lone pair disappear, and we see that that angular shape will stay there for us. Let's try something different now. We see that we've got that nice linear shape when there's two, but when we add a third atom, we now get that trigonal planar shape. Look how it's planar. Look how it's flat. It's two-dimensional. No matter how you look at it, you see a bond angle of 120 degrees. What would happen if we added that lone pair in? Remember how much repulsion those lone pairs create. I like to call those lone pairs electrons gone wild because they simply aren't localized in between those two nuclei. If we remove that lone pair, just so we can see the shape a little bit better, it's still there, but now we can just see what it looks like. You can see that that pyramidal shape appears, and we've got that trigonal pyramidal shape. What if we try to do four atoms? Recall that this will give us what we call a tetrahedral shape. And with this FET simulation, you really get a better idea than when we were doing it with the clay and the little dowel rods of how you can see all three dimensions being used. I'd like you to stop the video for a second and try to draw a dot diagram for carbon dioxide, CO2. Once you create that dot diagram, you'll try to figure out what the shape is. And looking now at the visual, we can see that this is definitely linear um, with two atoms attached and no lone pairs. Now let's try to do water, H2O. If you do the dot diagram correctly, you'll notice that there's two atoms that are attached to our central atom, and then there's also two lone pairs. And look at what those lone pairs do. They take those bonded atoms and they really bend them down. And those lone pairs up on top, those electrons gone wild, as I like to say, they take up so much room in that molecule because of the repulsion that they create. When boron bonds, it, it is very content to have six valence electrons total. And so we see molecules like BH3 and BF3. And in a situation like that, look at that bond angle. We've got 120 degrees. And of course, this is our trigonal planar shape. We can see that nice flat shape, that two-dimensional shape of the structure. This time, looking at NH3, um, I'm going to move this around a little bit because I don't want you to confuse it with the last one. You'll notice that those three atoms that are attached, look how they're all on one side and realize why there's one lone pair on that central atom and if you haven't done the dot diagram I do want you to do this on paper right now and stop the video because understanding that that lone pair is what creates that pyramidal shape rather than a flat planar shape is truly important in understanding the geometry of these different molecules. I'd like you to stop the video one more time and do a Lewis dot diagram for CH4. When you create this molecule, you'll notice that the carbon in the middle is attached to four atoms on the outside, and there is no lone pair on that carbon, which gives us a nice tetrahedral structure. That's the end of our tutorial. I hope you found it very instructional, and I hope you can now easily figure out different geometries of molecular shapes. Thanks for watching.